almost all good on the train. <laughs> um, we are just heading down to London. Um, we've got a busy morning of meetings. Um, we've got a few sort of confidential-ish meetings, a few sort of coffees, uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, Sam the man is here and we are just on the train from Norfolk to London. And yeah, it's a bit jam-packed. I don't usually like going unless I'm making a full day of it, but um, it, some of them are a little bit short notice last minute, so we are where we are. And we've been up nice and early, headed down, uh, and that's what we're up to really, just a few meetings, but we can't film annoyingly. But um, And then we're heading back up this afternoon, and we will see what the rest of the day has got in store for us, just trying to make use. I prefer what, when we're on public transport, if we can get a table, it's always helpful because it means we can smash so much out. So already this morning I've managed to get so much more done. Um, and they're all the niggly little tasks that I don't ever seem to find the time to get done. So I've smashed through my inbox, which has been about five days behind on emails. Um, and I got ticked off a load of things, people that wanted feedback on things and signing things off, critiquing things, bottoming out some new software developments we've had that people wanted to feedback on, um, some new automations that we're pushing live. So yeah, just got some niggly little things done and now I'm gonna make some calls with my trusty earpods and try and push a few other things forward for some new equipment that we wanna invest in. And that is what we're doing. So just had a walk round, caught up with Sam doing the boarding, um, which is nice. It's nice to see that going up, the plasterboard going on the walls, ready for plastering, hopefully in a matter of weeks, which is when I think the flats will really start to take shape, which will be exciting. Um, garden is looking good. Um, we've been getting this cleared. We've had a digger in here last weekend. Um, and now this is starting to be blitzed and because this was all just covered in crap. Um, all overgrown. I mean, when we actually bought this, the the greenery was, well, you can see where the ivy is on that wall there. So you see the dead ivy, basically the height of the, the overgrowth and the, and the rubbish that was in here literally came to there. So you could not see what you were dealing with and you, when you looked over the fence or when you looked in, it was overgrown the whole perimeter of the site. And so you did not know what you were uncovering. Um, so it's been a journey just to get it to this point and we've now found there was some concrete underneath um, which is, may cause some problems for the drainage that we need to install but compared to some of the other snags we've had on this project that will be the least of our worries but yeah it's just such a good feeling to actually start to have a clear perimeter of the site now um, and be able to actually feel like we can work with ease. We've started bricking up some of the old entrances and doorways and windows that were just wrecked and ruined um, and they're now sort of sealed up and done there's a few more to do and the, and the very back of the property needs some work um, but we're starting to pretty much be there with being wind and water tight um, apart from a few little snags and areas we need to do around the windows but then other than that we are all good and then it's all systems go on the internals last bit of muck and rubbish to be removed from the exteriors and then that'll be ready for landscaping so it's exciting, it's all go, it's all good, good progress, always not as fast as you would like it to be. It's just finding 
and finding really good trades is the big, is the most difficult thing. Um, although we have been quite lucky, we've got a fair few that have been really good um, and really useful and supportive of us on the project because we've had a few snags internally with different things going on and keep, keeping the thing moving. Um, and yeah, so that's that's what we're up to basically. So I'm gonna jump back in the car now, got a few calls to make, push some stuff forward, get back to the office, jump into my next meeting. Let's go. Along there, are they del delivering that directly to They're site? Direct to site on, yeah. um, on the 12th. Yeah. Which is Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, yeah. And, and then they're coming Thursday, innit? We'll pop in Thursday. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah, brilliant. And then in so in terms of just area for that, as long as I get everything pulled right out, so you've got a good yeah, three or you, four metres yeah, if you could gap. Just get this area, yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be great. The one that I'm more concerned about <laughs> is this. So I was saying to Steve, my plan was to try and get as much Obviously, the main mez is coming out to yeah. here or so. Yeah. Plan was to pull as much right out. Yeah. Get the, the the biggest thing that worries me. A lot of it I can rejig and move. Obviously, the big embroidery machine that's in here yeah. is a monster in there. So my thought process is to try and put that against a long wall. Like if I drag it out and move it, because yeah. I don't think I've got anything big enough. It, the forks, I don't think we'd be able to pick that up was and drag that it out. In it, was it? Than... No, they well, yeah, they they Assemble pretty much it assembled it in here. We can move it because at one point we had it along that wall. Yeah. Can drag it. I just don't. I can't see me being able to get it outside. No. Obviously, we want to keep the area as clear as physically possible. But I was saying to Steve, like obviously this sort of stuff's all on wheels, so I can drag all that out, clear all the racking, clear all the machines around the edge. But it's that main bit in there. I'm almost feel like we might have to push it on one wall. Yeah. or keep it central and then sort of try and move it round. But my original thoughts were just pull this whole lot down there. Then we realised obviously technically they need to bring the stills in. They so do. really they need access down there, out there, don't they, that they day? They do, yeah, but they're, they're not going to be able to forklift the stills in as such anyway. So they're getting uh, them through the door. And oh, okay. Out there, then they're put them on the forklift and get them in there. But so they, they I could... Get them through the, the width of that anyway, so, no, so. true. So, so I could fill that you, back yeah, corner, so all of that. So as long as there's three metres, like width here or whatever, then that's empty. Space that it was to now be able to chuck that right up there. I know it's mad. Idea to get rid of it and that was actually gone. So yeah, it's mad. It's uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a game changer in here when that's all done. When all that mess is in, everything's changed over, neatened up, all painted. That looked really smart. I don't know whether we could do something with this. I've got a load of. Um, I've got a load of offcuts of plasterboard at um, Chroma, which we could redo that. Just make it look a bit neater. Does it's that not the end of the world. I don't think it has to be. No, not by any stretch. Why? Well, what are you thinking? Get rid of it. Just tighten it up. Just bash it down. Yeah. There's no electrics in that part. Maybe ask the HSE guy when he comes out just to see what his thoughts are. There might be a reason, but we haven't got it done like that over the road. It's built into an office, just in a little cupboard. So that could that could work.
I mean, it just feels so much bigger here. Well, you're not really going to achieve that much, are you? And if we don't, it'll just end up becoming a dumping ground, doesn't it, if, we, if it's stripped out. It's just good that this is here, because if we can get a lot of this on pallets, we can whiz it up there. Then two weeks' time, when all this has got to be pulled down for those couple of those shutdown days, then we're prepped for it. Yeah. I'm ready to rock and roll. I just feel like if we open this up, it'd feel like a lot even more, even bigger in here. You'd have so much room. Um, it's just get starting to get stuff on, on pallets. So what is the plan in terms of starting to utilise this? Bottom part, or just mugs, tote bags. Yeah. And then whatever excess of those, because like we'll obviously order another. Because that's getting low now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So they would sit maybe there. Drop yeah, yeah. or even higher up. But you still have to deconstruct it. Well, yeah. You could get two two pallets in and the loose because you aren't going to get a full. When that's when they come in full, they're, yeah. they're huge. Right? Yes, yeah. And you Which wouldn't in, have to be top. right at the top, but then you'd bring it down for some float for her. Yeah. I guess, wouldn't you? But I don't know. Like, I don't know the num numbers on what, and what's you know quantities and quantities what comes and in. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know whether you'd order two. So if you want, say you yeah that yes. Order two, you can Two take, at a time. Take the top off one of them, so it yeah. fits in there and put it on there. Yeah, it's a good idea. Just getting that flow. And then the same with the tote bags. Yeah. You'd do a similar thing with them, wouldn't you? I, I guess that's going to stay there as your kind of goods out, is it? Or? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to stay there. I just had an idea to do it today. Yeah, just to put it somewhere neat. Yeah. It does need somewhere, so doesn't it? Down, I don't no, no, right yeah. in the middle of the gangway. Yeah, it's an obstruction, isn't it? I think it's going to look nut the nuts in here. Uh, the turnover just hasn't been, been high enough, has it? Really? In the um, well, no, in, in terms of the work that's been sent over there. No, yeah, you're right. But ultimately, that doesn't really impact the, the gross because it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't really well, matter. Well, it should, yeah, because obviously you're paying all those staff work on all the machines and you're still paying for all the machines. Oh, so I see, when you're rolling on, in there hourly, right. machines on, yeah, if your output isn't capacity or a certain level, you're just not going to, you're not going to get yeah. the right grocery, are you? Yeah, that's um, true. I did, I did see on your YouTube as well, you've got your first, like, container delivered. Uh, or was that a bit of kit in that big box? That's, that's the new kit. kit. Yeah, that's the new, um, uh, the right. new printer. Is that, is that running now? It is, so I'm told. I'm going to go and check it out later. But um, in the time we could print four notebooks, that can print ten. All right, OK. This is what I was, I talking, I was talking to Connor yeah. about this earlier, about investment in assets and stuff. Yeah. And how you, you've got four or five years in, I think, you know, with some more machinery and, you know, looking at stuff that's more efficient, faster. Yeah. And run for longer. So, that's what it's all about. Yeah, now, isn't it? So yeah, two and a half times the, the speed. Is it better? It's better green quality as well. My colleague here is telling me he thinks it's actually more than that. It, what speed? Yeah, yeah, he thinks it's more than ten. So we'll see. I think it's more like yeah. twenty, at least. You're gonna be over there. With, you're gonna be over there with your stopwatch, are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, we need to have a little look into what's what's dragging this growth down over there then, don't we? In terms of speed, I was speaking to the guy, he said what helps a lot is in, in bigger companies when they've got clothes, they have one person running it, and what they do is they have the equivalent of the night shift, but they unload everything. Load it. That's what we saw, we went to a factory the other day and they had, they had people just doing the trays and thinging. Once you start thinging. the job on yeah. that, it, if you yeah. leave it to sit for any more than five minutes, it starts to deteriorate in the ink quality. Really? Because it's so fast, it needs to be run. The guy explained it to me like a Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah. It's, Once you heat it up, Yeah, imagine. He keep it fired up. He said it was like a Lamborghini driving around town. It wants to go. It wants to go, but it can't. Yeah, so the best thing you can do is unload everything like the notebooks and just keep going and keep it running. And when you're doing that, there's no issues with it whatsoever. So it's just having the big jobs to do it. So or it needs meaty jobs. It needs to be ticking over constantly. It doesn't have to be... One big meaty. run, but it needs to be set up. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't do like one pen here, one pen there. Yeah. But all I do is I do a clean in between it. But the cleans are like less than a minute, so it's not really a big issue. It's just 
it helps keeping it running. Does it make you think that there's a place for the Roland to stay and only have one of these then, based on that? Mm, yes and no. Um, I think it, it depends what you're trying to do. Um, if Once I get this dialed in, it would be good to come back in a couple of weeks because there's definitely some settings I want to tweak with and play yeah. with. But if I can get them, like the Red Bulls, which Sam saw the other day, if I can get everything like that, we don't need Roland's, period. Mm. But if there's that one chance where it might not line up, then that'll be a conversation of do we just keep one Roland just to do the odd job? That's what I'm thinking. We are making some progress in the self-promo marketing room. Um, the main man, Ben, has racked it out. Um, still got a bit of organisation to do, um, but he's done a wicked job. He's got all the racks assembled, so everything's in here now, off the floor, and it's progress, not perfection. Um, we've got a bit more to sort out um, just to get... I keep saying, um... Um, <laughs> uh, someone was right. Someone said to me in the comments the other day on on one of the last episodes. Just take a moment and reflect how many times you say um 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 um. And now I am so conscious of it, but I've still not been able to kick the habit but I'm working on it because now it really annoys me when I watch it back and count the number of times I say um if I had a pound for every time I say um we wouldn't need to work so <laughs> I just replace the word so uh, it's looking good in here let's just say that progress not perfection the marketing room is coming on we are wrapping up another week here building the business Pretty good week, but I am absolutely knackered. I've been, we haven't been able to vlog everything this week, but I've been all over the place. We've been to London, we've been down to Essex. Um, I've literally been what feels like all over the country. I've been to quite a lot of events in the evenings and we've just got so much bubbling away on the property side, uh, on the new venture side, on the promo side, everything. And uh, I think might be over committing to a few things. So I need to rein it in a little bit because I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed. I've got the car back, which is a big, blooming thing uh, no thanks to Range Rover they were absolutely shocking um, to the point where I got a good mind of chopping it in and it's now raining so I'm going to wrap this up and we'll see you next week <laughs>